I have worked at small, mid and large size companies. And one issue that I was always able to observe is scaling the application. Well, lucky for me, my team and I were always able to overcome this problem in a creative and smart way. That's why I would like to share my learnings with you so that in case if you find yourself in this position at some point of time where the team or the company that you're working on is growing rapidly, you will know what to do exactly. So without further ado, let's get started. Just a quick one, guys. Your support really means a lot to me as a creator. It's one of the biggest motivators why I keep producing these kind of videos. So if you're wondering how exactly you can support my channel, simply make sure that you're subscribed if you aren't, of course, given that you find my channel and my content interesting. All right, let's take one of these mid-sized companies and they have a single page application that they built as a platform written in React, Angular, Vue or anything else and they make money from this. As the time goes, this company realizes that they are growing steadily. So what a natural inclination would be is getting the bigger market share and adding more and more features to the application. So how exactly would you add more features and keep the same pace? Of course, you would scale your teams. So if you had five developers, now you would have eight. And if you had one development team, now you would have two or three. So now you have more than one teams and more than 10 developers working on the same single page application. Let's take a React application. This is going to be difficult because this React application is called a monolith. A monolith in this case means a React application is living in one single repository where all these 10 or more developers are committing to. And it be just becomes really difficult to organize all of that. But one of the main issues is dependency on each other. So let's take two teams that are working on this same app and one of the teams wants to release their feature. Well, this is going to be really hard. You need to make sure that the other team is also ready to release their application and they don't have any work in progress. Otherwise, you simply cannot split your React application into two and release them separately because it's a monolithic React application that comes out of the box. And why exactly is this a problem for the company itself? Well, as I said, as a fast growing company, you wanna be able to release features on demand whenever needed, even daily. So naturally, if you wanna be able to release daily, you need to have less dependencies between the teams and more autonomy. Well, how do we do that? Maybe ask the backend engineers. The funny thing is that the backend developers have already figured this out with the concept called microservices. This concept of modularity and having a clear separation between your services and their deployments has been a practice in the backend developer for a while already. Although the funny thing is that if you go to three different companies and look at their backend infrastructure, you're gonna see that they've built their microservices in very different ways. But more on that in future videos. So make sure you subscribe. So as a UI or front-end developer, we would think why not take the same idea that the backend developers have and bring it to the front end, right? We can have microservices or micro front ends in the UI. And in fact, that's what larger companies do. And as this mid-sized company grows rapidly and gets more employees and more features, this is a natural pathway. But again, let's start from the very, very basic example of architecting your application in a smart and scalable way. Let's say you're a really small startup with one team of developers, let's say you have 10 developers maximum, the way you would want to split your application so that different developers are responsible for different parts of the application is of course by the route. So every route or every page is has its own little development team. The cool thing is that on the front end, it's much easier to split the areas or modules by their domains compared to the backend. On the backend, you really need to think this through. But on the front end, let's say you have two different pages. You have your main page of the, of the YouTube and you have your settings page. Obviously, this should be two different pages that two different teams can work on. Now, let's say from a startup, you've grown into a mid-sized company and now you have 200 engineers. Now, of course, this kind of a company would also have a much bigger application. And here you need a different way of thinking when it comes to designing your architecture. Because in this case, you no longer can rely on different routes, on different teams working on different routes. In this case, you really need to be decoupled. Your teams should be able to release separately. 
What can you do? Well, you can try one of the module federation frameworks or solutions. Well, module federation literally means that you have two or more applications that are completely separate apps that different teams can deploy separately. They can even live on different servers on different domains. But for the end user, this feels like one unified experience, like one unified application. And now let's say your mid-sized company has really grown into a larger company with hundreds or even thousands of engineers. And let's say hundreds of these engineers are still working on the same huge application. So how would the architecture look in this case? Well, the bare bones would be very similar to the one that we discussed previously. You would have module federation or something similar to that. But now you would probably use more advanced techniques. For example, something like an ingress proxy or some kind of a complicated gateway that is responsible for routing the users to the correct application. And even the module federation, but in a more complex way. Let's say you had your application split it into different pages, but now even on one page, you have three different teams working on. Let's say one team is responsible for the header of the same page, one team responsible for the main section, and one team is responsible for the player underneath, like in Spotify, for example. So by architecting your application this way, what exactly can you expect from your developers and your team organization? Well, everything is going to change. And first of all, teams are going to be more autonomous, which is what we wanted from the very beginning. This in fact leads to a better DevOps culture, to a stronger continuous delivery, and of course, higher velocity for your company so that you can ship these features very fast. Well, one question still arises. How exactly can you manage the communication between all of these teams? For example, you are having tabs in one team and the other team uses spaces in their editor. How exactly can you align on that? Well, different companies approach this differently. You could have a guild or a chapter where different engineers gather bi-weekly or even monthly to discuss this kind of topics. So topics like standardization. I almost forgot to mention that alongside the module federation, if you don't want to build this from scratch by yourself, tweaking some webpack settings, you can try one of the monorepo solutions such as TurboRepo or NX. This was it for today. If you still have any questions, make sure to leave them down below in the comments and I will make sure to answer them in a timely manner. And I will see you guys in the next one.